Hi everyone, happy Friday, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be discussing a super important health awareness day. Today is World Vasectomy Day. Excited to talk a little bit about vasectomies and uh, you know myths and facts about them and why they're super important to know about and why they're a great option for family planning. Welcome, welcome, we'll wait for more people to join, get up and walk around the room and we'll begin. If you are in the DMV and you're in need of HIV or STI testing, please know that Whitman Walker Health has testing available by appointment. You can give the number 202-797-4439 a call and uh, schedule an HIV or STI testing appointment either in Anacostia or in uh, Northwest DC around Logan Circle. Hi, Woody Seed, hope you're doing well. Hi, I'm a reform, hope you're doing well as well. But yeah, in the interim, uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, Whitman Walker's Community Health Department has expanded its outreach efforts to the social media platform. We cover various topics about HIV and STIs, sexual health practices, access to care, social determinants of health, and public health interventions. The community health team is here to educate and support you. Uh, for folks who are in the audience, if you have ever, um, if you have any myths that you've heard about vasectomies, feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, if there's any questions that you've got about vasectomies, also feel free to drop them in the chat. Super excited to talk about today's topic. Um, I had a friend who shared a, a podcast with me about vasectomies and kind of their, I wouldn't say growing popularity, but uh, more people using them. It's still a small number, but still more people using them specifically in Africa, which is like really culturally huge. Uh, so I thought it was important to cover this topic today. We've got women walker in the space. We'll just get them on stage and then really. <clears throat> see as Instagram catches up. All right. So my name is Jewel and I use she, hers pronouns. And I work to bring educational Instagrams lives to this space with Whitman Walker's community health team. And today we're going to be discussing World Vasectomy Day. So today, November 18th, marks World Vasectomy Day. And it's a day that's recognized on the third Friday of every November. This year marks the 10th anniversary of this awareness day. According to WVD or WorldVasectomyDay.org, the mission of this day is to create a global movement to increase male engagement in family planning or for folks who are assigned male at birth in family planning and increase investment in sexual and reproductive health care for men uh, and expand access to vasectomy training and services. The vision of this effort is to have men take equal responsibility for family planning and for folks who are assigned male at birth to take equal responsibility for family planning and have access to sexual and reproductive health care. So, uh, you know, this is a conversation that I don't know that we could have without uh, defining pregnancy and how pregnancy happens. Um, so pregnancy occurs when a sperm, uh, which is a component or part of ejaculate, aka semen, aka also known as cum, uh, fertilizes an egg after it's released from the ovary during ovulation. The fertilized egg then travels down into the uterus where implantation occurs. A successful implantation results in pregnancy. So there are a few medical procedures known as tubal ligation uh, for folks who are assigned female at birth or for women and uh, vasectomies for folks who are assigned male at birth or for men uh, that help to, you know, plan for pregnancy or to help prevent pregnancy. Uh, so these are medical procedures uh, and ultimately they change the body and kind of, they prevent it from fertilizing an egg or getting pregnant. So we also can hear a lot about uh, people with ovaries tying their tubes, uh, that's known as tubal ligation. Um, so this is generally a either free to $6,000 procedure and that's depending on your health insurance coverage plus the cost of the doctor's visits. Um, this is a procedure that people with fallopian tubes can get and tubal ligation just involves blocking and tying or cutting the fallopian tubes as these tubes transport the egg from the ovaries to the uterus. And when the egg cannot reach the uterus, pregnancy can't happen. Tubal ligation is a permanent birth control method. There's a very small chance that you may be able to reverse the procedure or get pregnant via uh, in vitro fertilization afterwards, but there's no guarantee. Additionally, tubal ligation requires one to three weeks of recovery time after uh, the surgery or the procedure. It does not completely stop your period. Uh, I know that, I mean, I would be wondering if it would do that, but it does not. Now, vasectomies. 
So vasectomies are often free to $1,000. So that's a whole $5,000 cheaper than tubal ligation. Again, depending on your health insurance coverage, plus the cost of doctor's visits. For people with testicles, a vasectomy is an outpatient surgery that involves blocking or cutting the tubes that carry sperm from the testicles to the penis. This keeps sperm from uh, being added to ejaculate. So no sperm equals no pregnancy. A vasectomy can be reversed, uh, but it's considered a permanent birth control solution. Uh, there, there can be a smaller chance that uh, if you were to reverse it, you will have a little bit more difficulty getting pregnant, uh, but it is a permanent but reversible uh, uh, solution for birth control. After a vasectomy, the doctor has to verify that no sperm is, being, is able to pass into ejaculate. So for the first three months after the procedure, you'll need to use other forms of birth control um, options just as precautions for any unplanned pregnancy. Uh, vasectomies require outpatient surgery, excuse me, local anesthesia and have a recovery time of eight to nine days. So again, that's much shorter than the one to three week period for folks who experience tubal ligations. Uh, but overall, it's cheaper, it's uh, shorter recovery time and a bit more reversible uh, than its counterpart, which is tubal ligation or tying your tubes. So there's a handful of common questions that people ask about vasectomies. Uh, these are just kind of what come up on Google, so I'll answer them. Uh, first question is, can you still nut, aka ejaculate, or come? If you have a vasectomy, the answer is yes, you can still come after a vasectomy. Uh, someone asks why you should not get a vasectomy. Honestly, that's really just going to be about your personal health and your personal contraceptive choices and reasons. Like, that's totally up to you uh, and or your partner to decide. Uh, people ask how painful is a vasectomy. Uh, you're going to be numb during the procedure with uh, local anesthesia, so it's not going to be a painful experience. I think there's a little bit of discomfort kind of the first, you know, couple of days after the procedure, but after that, you're, uh, it's almost like nothing happened to you. Uh, does ejaculating after a vasectomy hurt? Only the first couple of times, again, because those first couple of days are going to be, uh, you know, still freshly in recovery, but it's not like you're having monthly recurring period pain or uh, a very long uh, experience with pain from this, this uh, procedure. People also ask what the average age for a vasectomy is. Uh, the average age is 35 years old, um, which tracks in terms of like, you know, I think for, for people, uh, with reproductive organs and, and women, um, you know, a pregnancy becomes geriatric at age 35. So that just tracks and makes sense. Uh, people asked uh, whether or not sperm tastes different after a vasectomy. The answer is no, it does not. <laughs> they also asked how much a vasectomy costs. Again, we talked about this, but it's usually anywhere from zero to a thousand dollars and generally is covered by insurance here in the US. So in comparison to tying tubes, um, which costs zero to six thousand dollars and may include waiting periods, different coverage. Um, it just depends on where you live and what your insurance covers. Someone else asks, does getting fixed hurt? Uh, again, you will be numb with local anesthesia. So uh, also, I think some things to highlight from this podcast episode that I heard about people's experience with vasectomies was their, their reasons for doing it. One person, you know, he was married uh, with his partner and they had children already and you know he felt like he did not want to have any more kids and his partner discussed it um they were okay with him getting uh a vasectomy to help them pregnancy plan in the future um the host of the podcast actually was like well what if your wife decides that she's bored at home and wants to get another baby he was and his response was well we can adopt then like i've i've made this choice we've done the procedure it's done in that regard for me uh another person I think was actually a doctor who I think also performs vasectomies. Uh, he'd gotten one. And part of his reasoning was that he grew up in a family with a lot of kids. His, his father was a uh, polygamist, had multiple wives, had a lot of children, and there just wasn't uh, enough income coming into the house to support how many kids he had. And so he, this doctor didn't want to kind of be in that same situation or like, you know, give, um, give fire to that, that life, if you will. So he thought a vasectomy was a good option for him. Uh, and I think for other people, it's just more about uh, if you are a very sexually active person and you want to, you know, not always fear getting people pregnant with your sexual activity, then vasectomies was the way to go for them as well. Now, uh, I just always think it's important to cover the pullout method. Uh, if you are, you know, looking at pregnancy planning, just because it's so widely used and, you know, folks who are 
you know, either newer to sex or just haven't gotten the chance to be exposed to different pregnancy prevention methods, uh, they're going to be using the pull out method a lot. So honestly, if you're looking to get pregnant, the best preventative option you can use is the pull out method. If you're not looking to get pregnant, the worst preventative option that you can use is also the pull out method. Uh, the pull-out method has a perfect use failure rate of 4%, and this means that when it's done perfectly, the pull-out method prevents pregnancy 90% uh, of the time. A perfect pull-out means that the sex partner with the penis will pull out of the vagina or front hole when they feel they're about to ejaculate and offload away from their partner's genitals. Timing can be super hard to control, and this doesn't take pre-ejaculate or pre-cum into account, and pre-cum does have sperm in it, which can get a person pregnant. The perfect pull-out also involves taking precaution before having sex again. So you need to make sure that the penis is totally free and clear of any residual semen, that the person needs to urinate and clean off the tip of their penis before going in for another round of sex. Um, so now given that no one is perfect, it's estimated that 18 to 28 percent of couples using the pull-out method will get pregnant within the first year. That's largely because it's hard to pull off the perfect pull-out. And for folks who aren't in couples, for the singles, this means that you could get pregnant within the first year if you're engaging in sex regularly and using the pull-out method as your only form of contraception or, or birth control or pregnancy prevention. Um, well, thank you all for listening a little bit more about World Vasectomy Day and the, you know, the myths versus facts about vasectomies and just reasons why people get vasectomies. If you're cur curious and want to learn more information about vasectomies and or where to get one, you can visit wvd.org slash seeking dash a dash a vasectomy. Again, that's wvd.org slash seeking dash a dash a, uh, sorry, seeking dash a dash vasectomy. Um, but yeah, thanks again for learning about World Vasectomy Day and pregnancy planning. Before we go, I just want to share some information about HIV and STI testing and prevention. Uh, again, if you need to get access to testing appointment for HIV or STIs, you can call 202-797-4439, and you can also visit www.whitman-walker.org slash testing. Uh, if your community or your organization is interested in having Whitman Walker provide mobile health services in your neighborhood, you can contact mobile health at whitman-walker.org. And you can also access HIV prevention tools like PrEP or PEP, or start HIV treatment with Whitman Walker at their health centers in Anacostia or on 14th Street by Logan Circle. Because we're in multiple pandemics, we also have some information about uh, COVID-19 vaccines and uh, monkeypox or mpox. So if you've already gotten vaccinated, awesome, congratulations. You've taken a really important step to preventing yourself and your loved ones from getting sick and uh, for keeping your communities healthy. Multiple variants have soared across the world and it's totally understandable if you might wanna keep wearing your mask as the vaccine isn't 100% effective and, um, you know, more contagious variants continue to spread. And there are just few protocols in place to verify that people around you have been vaccinated or not. And again, you can, you can get the vaccine, or sorry, you can get COVID with the vaccine, but you just will have a less severe version of it. Uh, if you haven't been vaccinated and you're looking for an appointment, Whitman Walker Health has the COVID-19 vaccine available. Please call 202-207-2480 to make an appointment. Again, that's 202-207-2480. Uh, if Whitman Walker is just not uh, close for you or it's just out of reach for you and you're a D.C. resident, you can visit vaccinate.dc.gov or call 1-855-363-0333. Maryland residents can visit covidlink.maryland.gov or call 1-855-634-6829. Again, that's 1-855-634-6829. And Virginia residents can visit vaccinate.virginia.gov or call 877-829-4682. If you haven't been vaccinated and you're looking for an appointment, please continue to follow CDC guidelines for mask wearing, social distancing, quarantining, and the like. It's super important that you consider getting the vaccine and discuss COVID precautionary measures with those who are around you, but especially when you do not know whether a person's been vaccinated or not. So just be sure to wear your mask and keep your distance. Now monkeypox. Uh, according to the CDC, there are more than 29,000 cases of monkeypox documented in the U.S., and in D.C., you can pre-register for a monkeypox vaccine appointment at preventmonkeypox.dc.gov. Virginia has been working with their local care providers to contact trace and identify people who are most in need of a monkeypox vaccine. And uh, Maryland Health Department has released a pre-registration system. Um, so you can visit your, uh, anywhere you are, you can visit your state's local health department and just see what their guidelines and procedures are for uh, monkeypox prevention, education, and uh, vaccine registration. Uh, back to DC, 
DC Health DC Health has uh, monkeypox vaccination locations. They're located at 3640 Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue, Southeast in Ward 8, 5335 Wisconsin Avenue, Northwest in Ward 3, and 926 F Street, Northwest in Ward 2. Walk-up vaccinations will be provided on a first-come, first-served basis to eligible residents, and hours vary each day by location. Again, you can see the testing hours at preventmonkeypox.dc.gov. In DC, you're currently eligible to get vaccinated against monkeypox if you are a DC resident who's 18 years or older, 18 years or older, and you are a person of any sexual orientation or gender who has had multiple sexual partners in the last two weeks, including people who are currently high risk. So anyone who identifies as gay, bisexual, uh, or men who has sex with men, or a trans man or a trans woman, or a sex worker of any sexual orientation or gender or a staff of any sexual orientation or gender at establishments where sexual activity occurs. So this is uh, bathhouses, saunas, and sex clubs. You'll also need to pr provide proof of residency prior to your vaccination. So this includes an identification card with a DC address, a utility bill or other piece of mail with your name on it, and a DC address or a current DC lease or mortgage with your name on it. Uh, thank you all for learning about World Vasectomy Day, pregnancy planning, monkeypox, and COVID-19 vaccines. Please remember to follow our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts at Whitman Walker and check the website at www.whitman-walker.org for the most up-to-date information on our services. And for more COVID-19 resources and general Whitman Walker services, please call us at 202-797-4439. You can also follow some of our programs at Whit uh, and the Whitman Walker family at Real Talk DC underscore and at NoFilterDC. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday and happy, beautiful weekend.